Hey everyone, I'm gonna show you how to create a horizontal bullet chart in Excel. This is a chart type that I have struggled with in Excel for a while, but I was recently asked to make a bullet chart like this in Excel, and I figured out a better way than the way I've been doing it for a long time. And so I thought I'd share with you uh, how to do it. The vertical bullet chart in Excel is actually really easy. Uh, the horizontal one's a little more complicated, so I'm gonna show you how to do that here. Maybe one day I'll make a vertical uh, bullet chart tutorial. What is a bullet chart? That's probably your first question. Uh, as you can see, for each of these five groups, we have five data points. We have the black bar, which is an actual observed value. Think of that like, uh, I don't know, percent of sales for some part of your organization. So for group one, percent was 20 something percent. The target is what you were trying to achieve. So this is, you know, 18% or something like that. And then the blue bars behind it is like, you know, poor, good, excellent. And I just sort of made up all the data here so that you can get a sense of it. I can't share the data that I'm using for this particular project. So I thought I would just make the video, but show you sort of the basic uh, data. So that's what you have is really easy to sort of layer on. Again, a little more complicated to make horizontally, but I finally figured out a better way to do it than I was doing it. So here's my data. What I'm gonna do here, so I have my five groups. I've got these three fill columns. That's going to be the blue bars in the background. So I've got that. Then the actual and the target is obviously going to be those two points, the black bar and the line. I've got the height variable. I'll show you that in a second. And here will be the labels that we're going to add at the end. So where do these fills come up? Well, you know, for this case, I kind of just made them up, right? It's like 10%, uh, 12%. And then I wanted to max this graph out at 40%. Like I don't, I don't certainly don't need to go to 100% for this. 35 I could go to, maybe even 30, fine, but I just picked 40%. So here it's just 40% minus those other two cells. So each of these fill rows sums to 40%. That's 40%, that's 40%, that's 40%, so on. So let's start by making this chart with a stacked bar chart. So I'm gonna insert a stacked bar chart right here, and I'm gonna make that a little bigger so you can see it. There we go. Now, notice here, this is the first thing, super annoying, Excel has the opposite order of the bars relative to the spreadsheet. So we're gonna fix that. I'm gonna select the vertical axis, right click, hit format. I make two changes here, categories in reverse order, at max, that flips the axis, and then horizontal axis cr crosses at the maximum, that pushes it down here. So I'm good to go on that. Let's actually change the colors here just to make this a little bit easier for us, I think, if we just sort of set this up, uh, I'll use this blue color. So that'll be a light blue. This will be a slightly darker blue. And this will be my darkest blue. So I've got good, I've got poor, fair, good, or quintile one, quintile two, quintile three, quintile four, which I don't have right now, right? Okay, great. So now I've got my background bars. Let's even make them a little thicker by changing this gap width down to 100%. Okay, terrific. Now we need to add the actual and the target. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use a scatter plot. So I'm gonna right click on my chart, select data. I'm gonna add, the name of this first series is gonna be actual. And I'm gonna put in the Y values here. I'll put in these actuals, but we're gonna to have to change it in a second. So I'm gonna select that. I've got a yellow bars here. All right, so select the yellow bars. If you're on a Mac like I am, just select them, go to change chart type, X, Y, scatter and hit scatter. If you're on a PC, select the yellow bars, go to change chart type. You're gonna get a new menu is gonna pop up, go to the bottom and select the combo option and change the dropdown next to the actual series to a scatter plot. It's the same way, just slightly different. Now I've got this whole weird looking thing. Okay, so what do we got here? I mean, let's go back and look at the data. So I've changed this last series to a scatter plot, and Excel doesn't really know what to do with these X values. It's just plotted in as one, two, three, four, five. So that's hundreds, right? So what we need to do is actually change our data values. So for the actual series, the X value is gonna be the actual data, because it's tagged to the horizontal axis. And along the Y dimension, we're gonna select the height variable. I've set this pur purposefully uh, in this particular way. Let me click okay. And you'll notice here that my yellow dots are now arranged right in the middle of each of these bars because they're at 0.5 increments. And Excel is going to put my graph not to 4.5 because it doesn't let you put 
data at the top of your chart. So it's at five here. I know it's going to round up here. And here you can see here, it's also at 45%, not 40%. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that this never changes on me. So I'm going to lock this at zero, zero for the minimum and five for the maximum. So we'll lock that. Okay, that's the actual. Uh, let's actually uh, add the bar for this. So how do we do that? Uh, this is where it gets, uh, uh, this is where I really figured it out. I'm going to select my dots, chart design tab, add chart element. We're going to add some error bars. Now, my Excel is always a little hinky. I should get a more error bars option down here, which I don't. So if you get that, click that. If you don't have that like mine, I tend to select percentage as the default. It doesn't matter which one you choose. We're going to go in and change it anyways. So I'm going to select percentage. And you'll notice here that Excel adds a vertical error bar and a horizontal error bar. Select the vertical error bar. We don't need it for this chart. So just click delete. Literally select it and click delete. Horizontal error bar, select that. Right click to format error bars. And here we're going to make some changes. This is the same on Macs and PCs. So there's that one difference between the two operating systems. Otherwise, we're in the same world. I'm going to set the direction to minus. I'm going to change the end style to no cap. That's that little, that little cap at the end. We get rid of that. And I'll change the percentage here to 100%. I'm going to bring that all the way down. All right. So now how do we make this bar thicker? Go to the little paint can icon. Let's change this width of the error bar to 10. I think that'll be good. Now, I just you could tick that up. Pick whatever number you want. I've already done this graph, so I know 10 is going to work. I'll select the, the color. I'm going to change that to black. Things to look a little better. Now I click out of that. That's looking good. Let's click the markers again, and let's hide the markers. The format data series menu pops up for me. I'm going to select marker, marker option, and none. And those guys are gone. Terrific. I've got my actual setup. What about the target? Let's right click. We need to add the target back in here. We need to add as a data series. You notice that it's prompting me for scatter plots now that I've at, changed to a scatter plot. It's now prompting me for a scatter plot. So the name will be target. As I've mentioned, I always label my series. Data here in column G. The Y values, again, going to be the height. Doesn't matter that it's repeated. Excel doesn't care. And my points are in here somewhere. Can't really see them. They're being hidden. You can see that Excel didn't actually turn them on with color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Format tab, and I go to Target. I always like to show this. So this is why I turn this off first. I didn't have to, but I like to turn that off so that it forces me to go to the Format tab and show you this dropdown. Everything in our chart is right here. So I'm going to select Target. See, it's there. It's in there. And with that chosen, that selected, I go back to Chart Design, and I'm going to add error bars. Again, I get this weirdness. And you can kind of see, a little hard to see with the black. Here it is. I'll do this one down here. Don't need vertical. Delete that one. Select horizontal. The error bars, right? Select the error bars. And we're going to change these. Format error bars. Let's keep it in both directions. No cap. And let's change the value here. Let's use it as a value. It's a little bit easier, I think, to track. So let's just take up 0.2. Uh, maybe a little bigger. Yeah, 0.3. If I wanted the width of the bars just to stay on the bar itself, I could, I could change that. Maybe 2.25. But I think that's fine. And now let's change the color. I used yellow, I think, before. I'll use like this orange color here. And let's just make that thicker. Um, three looks pretty good. And the target symbol marker is already hidden, so I don't need that. So we're pretty good. Um, we're good here. We've got this. Look, look, we are really close. We're really close. The last thing is these labels. So. Let's add these labels. Actually, we, we're going to need to change these axes here in a second. But let's just add these labels. Select data. I'm going to add a new series. I'm going to call it labels. X values are going to be here. And I'm going to show you where I got this from in a second. And Y values are going to be here. You don't have to start with these numbers. Just put whatever you want. Just get them in the plate. Just get them on the graph. And then we can muck them around. OK, still not being labeled. Oh, man, how do I get it? Format tab, drop down labels, there show up, I right click, add data labels. All right, so by default, Excel is going to add your Y value to the right of the series. So I'm going to select those guys. I'm going to format, I'll say format data labels. And in here, I'm going to say select value from cells. And I'm going to select my labels here. So first group, second, third, target, actual, I've already type that in. Turn off the Y, and let's put this right above. Nope, let's center it. I 
think I have it set up to seven. Okay, that looks great. Look at that, that is set up. So what did I do here? Well, what I did for the first group is I just put it in the middle of this first bar. So it's 8% divided by two. For the second group, I did the first group plus the second value, 12% divided by two. For the third value, I did sum of the first two plus the second one divided by two. So it's in the middle of each of these bars, right? The target value, this one is just gonna be equal to where the target is, and the watt and the actual is gonna be just equal to that. I'm gonna subtract it off because I want it slightly off that bar. And then the Y values, I'm just kind of playing around here, like 4.8 looks okay. Let's add a white background to these so they sit on top of the grid line. See, that's not gonna work. So let's move this up just a little bit. There we go, 4.9, that works nicely. That target, it's at 4.95, let's move it up to 4.97, up a little bit. This actual, okay, we gotta change this. This one, I'm just gonna change my hand. I'll make the no fill in the text box, but I'll change the text to white. That looks good. And let's clean this guy up. I don't, I'm not gonna use a title for this chart. I don't need a legend for this chart. I'm gonna change my axis labels here. Change this to 40%. Use that. I don't need my vertical axis. Delete that. And my friends, we have a lovely, lovely bullet chart in Excel. It is a stacked bar chart with three scatter plots and two error bars. So it's a horizontal error bar along the actual series, it's a vertical error bar along the target series, and then one final scatter plot series to add those data labels. And so if my data update in any way, let's change this update here to 15% and 15%, notice how everything has just updated automatically and I don't need to do a single thing. All I need to do is update this, and update my data, and everything is going to move exactly where I want it. 40% doesn't make sense, let's put it right there. Look at that, lovely, love it. Love the way this turned out, I'm really happy with it. I hope you enjoyed that, I hope you learned how to make it. Check it out, let me know if you have a different way to do it, or even a better way to do it, a more efficient way to do it. If you'd like to learn more about DataViz, check out policyviz.com, check out this YouTube channel, and I'll see you at the next tutorial. All right, thanks.